Yeah. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and this is a conversation I've been wanting to have for a long time. Um, uh, Tom Kurduski, <laughs> just I just actually how <laughs> to pronounce your name just screwed up. Kurduski, um, thanks for joining me today. Hey man, thanks for having me. I'm I'm always excited to talk about the book and hear my own voice. <laughs> so, Perfect. so yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, I, and you've done a number of things, so we want to we want to talk about uh, all of those. But uh, you know the the kind of the we I've been talking about Tom's book with uh, Jennifer Morrow uh, Primer for a bit of time. And I actually, uh, my daughter became very excited by the book and she wanted to review it. And so it's, it's people who've been on this channel a while know I've been chatting about this book for a long time. So I'm, I'm just, I'm overjoyed. We're finally going to get to talk to you in the book. Thanks, man. I'm sure that, uh, your daughter's, uh, review is probably one reason why we did so well on the, on the charts. <laughs> so I'm sure like, <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that, but, but, uh, maybe. but she was thrilled. Uh, and, and so speaking of which, I, I try and give as many comics uh, to my kids as possible. And it's always very hit and miss what they'll take. And I, But I've been noticing this trend, especially the last year or two, where a lot of manga titles are, it's catching them much faster. And they yeah. just seem to really absorb it. Yeah. Um, Primer was the huge exception in the last year, where instantly uh, my kids, and then I've given the book to many kids around the neighborhood, um, they all love it. And uh, yeah. Tell me about how this book came about. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny. The uh, people love that cover, and I it's the colors I think that really draw, uh, you know, a younger audience in because it is so bright and fun. And I give all the credit to DC for that because uh, it's just the character standing there. And mm -hmm. my original idea was like, can we have her doing this awesome action pose, destroying robots? They're like, no, that's not going to get the you know the readers in. I was like, really? But that's what I would want as a <laughs> as a young kid. Mm -hmm. So they, they they came up with the cover, and that's what really uh, you know draws them in. So that's all DC. Um, but uh, you know, to to actually answer your question, <laughs> like, how did we come about this? I mean, the the short answer is we came up with the character because Jennifer and I we've written for animation for so long, and um, we were literally sitting around one morning just trying to figure out what would make an awesome superhero because every superpower has been done. So it's not the power that makes you special. You know, it's, you know, who the character is, but the truth is as you know, the young boy in me still loves awesome action and superpowers. Mm -hmm. And so we just thought, um, you know, what if a character had more than just a few powers, you know, Superman has a few, whatever, but super primer we gave her like 33 powers i had to like try to invent superpowers because i ran out of <laughs> that's awesome match. so we were we were just sitting around talking about uh you know paints body paints and like it just came out like oh what if a character had different body paints with powers and the reason why that was that was attractive to us is because you know how like when you have a new artist come on to do a book, they kind of do their version of, you know, Batman's costume or, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of always, you know what to expect. It's the Batman costume, but they always add cool little, you know, things to it. This is like with any comic book artist, they give their cool take on a costume. Yeah. And so our thought was like, what if a character's costume was never, ever the same, you know, no matter what they'd, they'd go out and they'd look completely different. Um, and so that kind of just really, stuck with us you know someone having all these powers looking different every time and also being very colorful and fun because i'm i'm very attracted to bright colors uh, and so from there um you know <laughs> i know this short answer is turning along no but, uh, we went so jennifer was uh, friends with an editor at dc comics named michelle wells mm -hmm. who's now you know a very good friend of both of ours but uh, she just pitched the idea to her at a party <laughs> she's like hey you know, Tom and I came up with a superhero called Primer, and uh, she has these powers, body paints, and Michelle loved it. So uh, she had us just write up like a, a one pager, and uh, she took that to DC. You know, it's it's just one of those things nice. where you know luck uh, favors the prepared. You know, Jennifer happened to be good friends with Michelle. We are in the industry of animation already, uh, and then we had just the right character. So that's 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 where it all started. And that was about three years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we came up with the character the beginning of 2018 and they bought it like a few months later. <laughs> so yeah. it's, like, it's not, it's not normal. That's uh, no, it, it, you know, and, and I want to ask you this, or, I, you know, this isn't meant to be like a backhanded insult to, to any of the other books, but it, it's, it felt like they got 
everything right with this one in terms of kids. Yeah. From, yeah. yeah. No, so I'm sorry. Go on. You're probably. Well, no, no. It just, it just, it just I, I was looking at the book earlier and I, I was at a bookstore earlier and kind of looking at the shelves and it's the size, the format, the price, the cover, like you go down the list. It's, yeah. it's, every, it's, they're doing the right thing every step of the way with this book. Yeah. Thanks, man. You know, it's, it's weird. Cause I, you know, I love all those other books in the line too. There's, there's some great stuff in there, but the reason why I think this is the one of the one that does so well, um, honestly, it's just, I can't speak obviously from the audience perspective because I'm a, you know, 44 year old grizzled old man, <laughs> but, but I, I personally, you know, since I write a lot of animation for a living, I'm in that young kid space in my head. You know, I really haven't grown up there. So when we were creating Primer, we just thought, what if we were younger, if we were kids again, what would we want to see? And, you know, I was never into like uh, Harry Potter or even Hunger Games books, all those YA middle grade things. Mm -hmm. uh, I just like Jennifer and I prefer, you know, these bright, fun stories. And the other books DC has, I mean, they're, they're all great, but some of them, you know, have just heavier topics yeah. um, and, and are just could be a little darker, you know, some not so much, so, you know, like uh, Diana, Princess of the Am Amazons. But, um, you know, I, I just got to say, it's probably, it's probably just the colors. I, um, I wish I could give you more reasons as to why we, you know, why you, you say the book is so good and, and does so well, but, um, it's a fun story. It's not too dark. Uh, you know, DC did do the right thing. They had us pull back some of our darkness. Actually, we, we, um, you know, so this is also to their credit. I think at the time, Jim Chadwick was our editor uh, after Michelle was not. But um, if you know, there's the, the there's a gang in there called the Night Knights. You know, mm -hmm. they're a silly, yeah. stupid street gang. So originally, we had put in actual, like, more realistic street gangs shooting guns at each other and, like, on the freeway driving. And so, because we're like, oh, that'd be cool if she could stop, you know, realistic gangs. And then DC said, well, you know, we don't want to put too many guns in there. Can you change the the gang up and so that's why we made it like this silly comical gang mm -hmm. uh you know and, and if we had if we had kept in the realistic the more realistic kind of gang shooting guns it probably would be a turnoff you know so dc to their credit was like yeah if we want readers to really be drawn in let's you know not get too dark so it was smart um no, I mean, there's a couple things of this. I, I think it, certainly the inside of the content i mentioned i've given this to to friends uh, who have kids and and it's it's self-serving. I mentioned before we started the interview with you, I, a lot of self-serving. I want to sell comics down the road. These kids have to start somewhere. Yeah. This becomes a really safe, fun place to start kids with comics. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the cool thing is that all the books in this line that DC is, uh, is doing, as you know, you know, they're called evergreen books, right? They're mm -hmm. meant to stay on the shelf for years. They're not going to, you know, be on that new release shelf for a month and then get replaced with the next issue. Um, so, I think the hope is, you know, that the younger audience will read Primer and then, you know, start giving the other books uh, a chance. Um, yeah. You know, maybe as they get older and they are they're more interested in hearing, you know, maybe slightly more serious stories uh, in the DC universe, like with, you know, Shadow of the Batgirl and these other things that they're doing. So, um, yeah, it definitely is a great book to to bring, you know, that audience into comics in general. So. Uh, we're very fortunate that you know it's really taken off. Well, you mentioned the cover. So another kind of piece to all this is uh, before anybody even picks up the book and knows what's inside of it, um, you mentioned the colors. The, the cover is extremely distinctive. It stands out. Yeah. Um, spine. Um, I, these are all sound like very silly things, but I, I go into the shop <laughs> and over and over people make the wrong choice. With yeah. this one, it's it's easy to read. My daughter pointed this out to me that uh, she's like, why is this book? Because I bought... Uh, a number of the other uh, the, from DC and Marvel in, in this line. Sure. Um, Primer is the same size on the shelf as My Hero Academia and One Piece and these other books, yes. which is in a format that for whatever reason is really working right now. And Dogman for that matter. Yeah, yeah that's, that's huge. huge. <laughs> um, but these other books, they all go bigger, stranger. It just, it, it, it feels like somebody was guiding you right because from the cover to the spine, to the design, to the shape, everything, it just, all the right choices were made. Oh man, thanks. Uh, can you be my PR person? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. It's, it's, it's great. Uh, I mean, and never mind just opening up the book and when you get to the actual content inside, then it then it works. But it 
it gets off the shelf because it fits. And it's, it feels like you laid out a blueprint for how to do this for comic companies. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, you know, we, I also got to give massive credit to Gretel Lusky. Mm-hmm. Funny, the artist who I've never met or talked to. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. she, uh, it might actually be pronounced Gretel Lusky. I'm not quite sure how her name is pronounced because I haven't talked to her. Just email. But mm-hmm. it's, you know, DC, when, uh, when they, um, you know, greenlit this, you know, they gave us a few different artists. They're like, hey, who do you, who do you like? And obviously we loved Gretel's stuff. Uh, and then DC was like, Gretel really wants to do this character. And we're like, then done. Because yeah, all of her samples were just amazing. So, you know, that, that's also, uh, you know, one of the huge factors it, in the visual, um, you know, uh, attractiveness of the book. It's because Gretel is, you know, she specializes in <laughs> really amazing art with bright colors. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, we got somehow the perfect, you know, package and pieces came together. So, um, yeah, right. yeah, I, yeah, it's honestly, I think a part of it, one reason we also created Primer is because when I was a kid and I wanted to be an artist, like if I was in art school, in my, my art classes, I would use a lot of bright colors and like put them together and it looked really gaudy and horrible, but I loved it. My art teachers would just mm-hmm. tell me to not do that. So <laughs> Gretel, Gretel takes all the bright colors and all of our ideas and makes it look good. Um, but, uh, I forget how I got to that, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's an attractive looking book for, you know, a young audience. Do you think I, I have to believe and it's, it's this, this market is really important and I, again, keep it more positive than negative. This is where I, uh, I worry about the next generation because yeah. what I've seen and, and maybe you've heard, I've, I've talked about before, uh, we see these kids coming in with Dogman. They come into scholastic type books, it's great content there. Mm-hmm they then seem to hop to manga is the next step. And that's the part where I'm, I'm the U S companies. I want to be more alarmed by that. And this is where primer. And for those of you, by the way, who don't know, you're like, Oh, it's a kid's book. Primer was regularly number one on Amazon for graphic novels, <laughs> eating Watchmen and dark Knight returns and all these, these legendary War or whatever it's called. And like Batman, yeah. and it was like, yeah, it was crazy. It was number one twice of all the DC books. It was a bestseller. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go on. Keep no, no, you were <laughs> number one over the Marvel books as well at one point. Like, you were number one overall. It, were we really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Send me that screenshot because I haven't seen it. No, I, I probably haven't. I, the, <laughs> and in other regions, you're still in the top five outside the U.S. It's it's it's. Is it? So yeah. Tell me because I don't know. I only check the Amazon <laughs> And the NPD book scan results, you know, I don't know uh, the full numbers and, and how it's doing in the rest of the world. I'd love to know. It's it's doing well. It's it's one of the books that seems to have penetrated and and uh, is actually selling to the market in Asia, which is again uh-huh. very rare from this direction. Really? Yeah. So it's well there. It's I don't know if it's translated. So I mean, if, if you know, I kind of imagine if they actually translated, it'd be even better. But I mean, yeah. it's 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 kind of. Uh, I think it's very important because we forget sometimes the older comic fans, people have been in it for a long time. You started from somewhere. I mean, for me in the eighties, uh, starting with things like transformers and, oh, yeah. and things that had toys attached to them. Yeah. You've been with comics forever. What, what, what got you into comics? Well, you know, it's what, I got, what got me into comics was my dad had a comic book collection, uh, just a small one when I was a kid, mm-hmm. uh, like from, from his time uh, as a kid, he had like old, you know, Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen kind of comics and some old Batman stuff. So that got me into it. And then throughout the eighties, uh, I was mainly collecting actually Archie comics because my dad had some Archie comics. Mm-hmm. So I spent all my money mostly on Archie when I was younger and they had like three or four new books come out every week. Uh, so I wasted a lot of money on Archie. Uh, and then, you know, I think just, I, I guess it was probably in the mid to late eighties when, um, just as I got older, I probably had more respect for like the stories of Batman and, you know, the whole action y, you know, the uh, boy's wish fulfillment kind of thing that I wanted. Like, oh, superheroes are really cool. But I think Batman really was like my gateway uh, hero into the comic book world. And from there, when the movie came out in 89, yep. you remember how huge that was, uh, that just made me want to read, you know, a ton more comics. Uh, you know, I finally got around to reading Dark Knight Returns. Um, and all that stuff. So I was like kind of late to the classics, like, you know, Dark Knight Returns and Watchmen. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's what got me into reading it. And then I did want to be a comic book artist when I was a kid. 
Uh, I just couldn't draw that well. So originally, I did want to get into comics professionally and then realized I wasn't that good of an artist. I became a writer for television and then just fell into comics. <laughs> so it's nice. a very strange thing where it's like, yes, I wanted to do it when I was younger, gave up on it, and here it just came and shoved itself in my face. So I love that direction. We hear a lot about comic uh, creators who are, who are wanting to you know, get out of comics into TV and you're coming the other way, which is awesome. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Cause I, I do see that. Like I, anybody who can write comics can write TV. Anybody, I think writers are very versatile and we get pigeonholed into things. You know, I do know, yeah, the, uh, the artists and writers you're talking about, we're like, I want to do TV. And then you're like, ah, but you're just a comic book artist, you know, or just a comic book writer. Uh, for <laughs> me, I mainly write animation for a living. And when I, you know, say, hey, I want to go do some live action stuff, they're like, no, but you're just a cartoon writer. I'm like, oh, come on. Uh, you know, I can do anything just like any comic book uh, writers or artists could. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I was very fortunate to, to uh, have uh, Jennifer have the right connections to get us into DC. So it's just part of the business is schmoozing and making those, oh, yeah. which I hate doing. That's, that's why I'm, you know, that's why I let Jen do it. <laughs> Perfect. That's a good team then. Yeah, exactly. Tell me about so so you you mentioned you you worked in animation you uh, you obviously have some shows behind your belt what 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 would people know what would people remember oh man well you know I was so excited when I got to write uh, Ninja Turtles for Nickelodeon mm -hmm. uh, wrote one episode of that I wanted to do more but that was like a dream come true and then I did get to write uh, for some Iron Man cartoons back on uh, man like maybe two thousand nine. I was like, I'm writing Iron Man. It was pretty great. It was, I think it was called Iron Man Armored Adventures on Nicktoons. Nice. Was a cool show. So that, and then if, uh, if you watched The Fairly Odd Parents when you were younger, which is a Nickelodeon okay. show, I wrote yep. on that. I was Emmy nominated for outstanding writing on that, but didn't win, obviously. Uh, let's see. Oh, man, a ton of, I'm running for Snoopy right now for Apple TV Plus. Um, oh. Yeah. And, jeez, man. Uh, I gotta pull up my resume. I can't remember, but <laughs> well, I know you did Cat Scratch. You did uh, Action Dad. Is that one of yours? Action Dad. Yeah, that's that's mine. And, and no one's seen it. <laughs> I've done like a lot of shows nobody has seen. <laughs> but uh, more recently, I was hired to punch up uh, uh, Power Rangers, the live action Power Rangers show. So the ones that that's out now that just came out earlier this year, I punched up the whole season. Um, oh. Yeah, and uh, oh, geez, man, a ton of stuff. Uh, yeah. Do you think it's difficult to to write for kids or write for a younger audience? I don't. Um, I've been doing it now since like 2004. And I think when I got my job at Nickelodeon in 2003, I think it was like, it was like a dream job because like everybody there is basically just a big kid. So mm -hmm. we have to stay in that space. And since I've been writing in the kid space for so long, now it just is like second nature to me. Um, so it's... <laughs> Definitely not hard for me. I see people who do struggle with it. Uh, I guess they're just more mature than I am. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> You're very humble. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, honestly, I, I just don't like to take things too seriously, and I'm not very serious about it much because I like to have a lot of fun. I think that's why Jennifer and I are good um, you know, at being able to write for a younger audience. It's just, I don't know, it just keeps us feeling young, man. Uh, that's just basically it, you know. I mean, one of the things that you really you, that you, you take from Primer, if you if you read it, is and by the way, it's it's a fun book. If you're an adult, it's not like it's just for kids. It's yeah. it's fun uh, action story. In fact, when a lot of people talk about you know classic superhero stories, I think you could read this book and it would feel right at home. To, <laughs> you know, the X Men in the '80s, frankly. Yeah, you know that was like my. I love origin stories, especially in like movies and comics. Like I love you know those first issues where you you know, learn where they're coming from, when they get their powers. So we pretty much wrote this like an origin story for a movie. It hits all those exact plot points. Uh, you know, some people say it's predictable. I'm like, yeah, it is predictable because you've seen this formula a bajillion <laughs> times before because uh, every movie has the same formula. So, um, yeah. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's it, exactly. It, it just, it, um, I think it feels like, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to phrase this away, and it's no knock against anybody else, oh. that people, they enter into the, the space and they're like, well, I'm writing a kid's story, but it needs to not be too much for kids. We need to make sure we're putting some shocks in there and we need to do this and this and this. And they kind of make themselves a list of things that wind up sabotaging the book they're writing, or rather 
they get something where maybe the adults are like, what a great thoughtful kids book, but the kids won't touch it. Mm-hmm. And it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tricky, I'm trying. <laughs> well, no, you're right. It's, it's, it's we, I, like I said, the book was going to be a slightly darker thing until DC had us pull it back. And That's good to hear, quite frankly. Yeah, they, I'm not quite sure, you know, I don't know obviously how they work necessarily or what, what's going on in their heads, but with this one, they just seem to make the right decisions, you know, all around. Um, not that they're not making the right decisions with their other books. I'm sure they completely understand what they're doing. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like we, when we came up with the story, we had to give, you know, Ashley some kind of, um, some kind of, not flaw, but she was just, we had to give her some kind of like troubled life because mm-hmm. the one thing that Jennifer and I learned in writing is that you can't make it too easy for your hero. So that's really the only dark thing in the book is is her backstory with her father. And even then they had us pull back a slight bit in the flashback to her father, you know, acc- you know not sorry, not accidentally, her father um, pulling off a crime. Mm-hmm. There's a gunshot in there. And they had us pull out the gunshot sound effect. So you don't actually hear the gun go off, but you know it went off anyway. So like they had us pull that kind of stuff out. So, but putting in that kind of backstory was like, we still had to keep it just light because yeah, we didn't want to like, you know, push anybody away. Sometimes parents will read, I'll read reviews from parents who say, uh, you know, they're not fans of that scene, but they still love the book. So it's kind of like that balancing act of like, what do we do to make this character have an interesting backstory give her some flaws, uh, you know, have her question herself, but also just be a fun story. Again, it just came together very organically, even though we, you know, hit the plot points of, you know, a movie screenplay or whatever, we never forced anything in. Um, it, we like to organically come up with the answers to problems to make everything fit. And I think that's what, uh, what we're good at just cause we've been doing it for so long, you mm-hmm. know, give us the notes from DC and we'll make it work. And it won't, you know, be look forced. How how long did it take to uh, to put the book together? You you mentioned well, you, you actually mentioned in in two thousand eighteen. But what what's going on there? Are the two of you kind of working side by side? You're working with the artist. Like how? Uh, what's the pace of this book look like? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I think was it two thousand eighteen or maybe it was. Uh, I guess it was maybe it was actually early two thousand. 19, no, it's 2018. What are we, 2021 now? Okay, it's early 2018. Year is blurry year, so yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. So, uh, you know, like I said, uh, we had come up with the idea, and within three months, DC had, you know, greenlit it. And then from there, um, we had originally had to come up with a few different, out, uh, so not outlines, but uh, two-pager premises for the story. Originally, it was going to be Ashley, or I'm sorry, Primer fighting um, Lobo, because Lobo wanted the paint. So there's a whole like other backstory. And then, and then <laughs> oh, we did like a <laughs> that'd, be, like, no, that'd be crazy. All right. I know. <laughs> then there's one where she was gonna fight the fight Deathstroke. Uh, and then DC came to us and you know, at, that that took probably just you know, each of those stories only took like a day to write because they were just like rough. Mm-hmm. Uh, but once we it took us probably, I guess, a few months to get an approved outline. Um, and then from there, man, honestly, I can't remember. Uh, we're very fast writers. So every time DC would come back to us with, you know, notes on the outline or whatever, we just turn it around really quickly. Um, so I, I, we finished writing it in, I want to say mid 2000 and or so early 2019, we had finished writing it early 2019. And then Gretel was doing the art, um, as we were giving her pages and as you saw, the book came out a year after we finished writing it because publishing takes forever, just like animation takes forever. Yeah. Uh, but we did talk, you know, we would give our notes to DC regarding artwork and then they would relay them to our artist and she would send us, uh, you know, all her you know, rough designs early on and we'd give notes. Um, but the truth is we, we didn't have too much contact with our artist because she was so good. It was like she took our pages and our direction on the pages and just, you know, blew it out of the water. Uh, the stuff she did, this, some of the stuff she did, we didn't even think up. She's just like brilliant the way she puts it together. So we didn't need to really, you know, hold her hand. We gave her some ideas about Primer's costume and, you know, how she should be. But, um, uh, you know, mainly it was, 
it was just us dealing with mainly Jim, our editor. And once we kind of nailed that story, like I said, it just didn't take much longer for us to, to write it. It's all in the artwork, taken a ton of time. Um, but yeah, I guess from conception to the finishing of the writing, uh, a year. Yeah. You wound up, um, and it's weird to kind of phrase it this way, but you wound up benefiting. You became a pandemic book in the sense yeah. that, uh, you know, you came out June of 2020 and kind of right in the middle of a lot of chaos. Yeah. Um, and and certainly I think a lot of parents uh, frantically trying to find entertainment that is not TV <laughs> every yeah. time. Yeah. Um, and, and this book kind of snowballs from there. I, I, um, what, what do you hear? You, you mentioned you, you look at reviews, you see parents. The response has been obviously sales are huge, but but what do you what do you hear from parents? Oh man, um, well yeah. First off, it's it's a strange you know having success, having the book benefit from the pandemic. Uh, you know it's it's horrible, but uh, you're right. I think it's one reason it did well is because people were looking for something to read, and uh, you know books did huge last year, didn't they? We're like graphic novels, it was insane. Yep, things went um, up. Yeah, for sure. But parents, parents feel very. From what I read, they're very comfortable, you know, giving this book to their kids. That like you, they they read it first themselves, and then they, just, I just guess they really understand that it's a safe book to leave your kids with. You know, like if you sit your kid in front of Rugrats, you know, you, you know you're gonna, the kid's not gonna see something that they shouldn't see, and so I think that's the main reason parents love it. They say it's a simple story, uh, you know, with a lot of comedy and with a good, um, you know, lesson, basically. I guess it's a very empowering book, especially for, I suppose, you know, anybody who relates to a 13-year-old girl. You know, if, if it's just like one of the most well, – I think what it was is when we created Primer, we wanted to create a new specific girl character – who's not, you know, dour or gothy, but just like this fun, goofy kid. Mm -hmm. And so I think when parents see that, they're like, oh, you know, this primer kid, I would not mind my child hanging out with her, you know? Um, she's yeah. She is a bit of a, um, you know, let's see, iffy character because she, she used to break some rules here and there. Uh, but it's all about her learning her lesson to not break those rules, which also I think is an important lesson for, you know, readers. Like, oh, yeah, you know, there's some things I should not do. Ashley did them and they're wrong. And so she learned her lesson. So honestly, I, it's parents just really love the fact that it's, a, a you know, another strong girl character, uh, which was honestly like our one reason we created her. Uh, after watching the Wonder Woman movie specifically, I say this in interviews a lot, but in the beginning of the Wonder Woman movie, when uh, young Diana is watching the uh, warriors fight, she comes out from hiding and she starts mimicking their fighting. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so awesome. Because I haven't seen like mm -hmm. a young girl character in a movie come out and like want to be like a badass. And I was like, that like made me tear up, you know? It yeah. Big it's a great guy. Yeah, it was a, it was a great scene. So I was like, that was definitely like an impetus to creating the character. I don't know if I use the word impetus right and mainly right. Bar jokes for kids. So. Um, but uh, <laughs> this is, yeah. you, uh, you said something earlier, which I think really strikes me because uh, I think, again, people kind of seem to struggle with it, or it seems to be one of those, you gave her, you gave Ashley flaws. Mm -hmm. Like she is not a perfect hero or close to it. Yeah. And, and that makes her very relatable. Like you made a, you made a badass, you know, girl hero, mm -hmm. but she doesn't just show up and succeed at everything. There's, there's actual struggle and you cheer getting over that struggle. feels very dumb for me to be saying this out loud, but <laughs> that, I, that this, this again seems to elude a lot of other stories where they, they worry about giving the heroes flaws. Yeah. I just, I, I can't stand a perfect hero, you know, unless it's a joke. And so you're right. Yeah. Ashley, uh, it was important for us. I think, you know, having been a teenager myself and just going through, uh, well, here it is. Here it is. When I was a kid, I had like all the heroes I could possibly want, right? I'm, you know, I'm a straight white male. I would watch a movie and be like, oh, it's a straight white male all over the place, all oh, over the place. Yep. And so as I got older, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, those guys were perfect in the movies. And I tried to uh, attain that same perfection, which is unreal. You know, it's stupid. It's a movie for a reason. These perfect, you know, action heroes. 
Exactly. And so it made me feel inadequate because I was like, oh, I'm not that tall. I'm not that funny. I'm not that charming. And it made me feel like horrible. And I was like, oh, what if I could read a more relatable or see a more relatable hero that represents me? So one reason we gave Ashley those flaws is because, you know, if you know that she's messing up here and there and you as a reader realize you mess up, you just don't feel as uh, isolated. You, you feel like, oh, Ashley kind of represents me because she's flawed. And so that was one reason we did it. Like, I'm, I'm going to continue to make primer you know, mess up here and there because I think that encourages people like, you know, oh, you can still mess up and try again because nobody's perfect. Primer's not perfect. I'm not perfect. So, well, I mean, even those those characters in the 60s and 70s that were the, the white male heroes, the, yeah. the Peter Parker screwed up tons. That's and true. Yeah. It was relatable. But it wasn't um, you didn't write heroes back then that were just perfect they, they would they would mess up tony stark had alcoholism and yeah. there, there'd be various things that were the flaws and it uh i think the flaws make the character endearing and to the reader the reader can like you say relate yeah yeah i think you're right i think the 80s and probably gets the late 70s when they started doing um giving those characters those heavy backstories right like i yeah. think there was a uh there's an old uh is it the green arrow story where like his ward was a yeah, Green Arrow. Yeah. Yep, Speedy. Yeah, you bet. Speedy, yes, thank you. And yeah, so, no, unfortunate name for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's really interesting to see them do that. When they start making the characters more relatable, it's just, uh, I mean, that's what sticks with me now, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I think it's a, it's a core, especially if you're going to talk to this, this kid audience, one of the things you notice uh, from a lot of the popular manga that, that is selling well is the characters are again, messing up all the time. They're, they've got flaws. They're trying to overcome the flaws. In some cases they, uh, they go too much to that. You get 20 episodes of a flashback about the flaw and you're like, okay, too much decompression, but it is, it's this key part of the storytelling that um, again, it came across in primer and it, it, I keep talking about this book in different videos because it. I'm, I'm trying to kind of figure out, like I started this this interview with it, like so many things went just right, yeah. <laughs> and and this is one of them. It, it's the character is one that you you want to succeed, so you want to keep reading yeah. to watch her succeed because she doesn't just start succeeding right out the gate. Yeah, you know that was important to us. Uh, Got to throw the flaws in there, man. Um, jeez. It's you also built a, a bit of a, a franchise. Now I, I, I don't want to pester you for any of this, but uh, it, it feels like uh, this is a character that certainly now has made some money. And, and if DC were so inclined or Warner, they could do TV shows. They could do cartoons. They could do more comics. It feels like uh, the, it feels like a true birth of a hero. <laughs> oh yeah. I am very excited in the fact that DC likes to, uh, you know, spread their characters around in all sorts of different mediums. So yes, uh, it's here's hoping. Yeah, and you know, one reason that they did um, also buy the one reason they did make the book and buy it from Jennifer and I is because since we have this big animation background, they're like, oh, if we eventually do a primer animated series, we'd want you guys to run it because you know everything about animation. And so we're like, yeah, great. Um, but again, like as you're saying, yes, it's definitely the start of something. Uh, big right now you know that's all i can really say <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but yeah, i don't I really know. can't say anything means there, you know yeah okay. maybe some stuff's happening i don't know well i mean you know i i think no matter who no matter what business person in charge if you're looking at something and going what's this uh brightly colored book that's beating watchmen um that you know <laughs> you should you should do more with that yeah. um you, you know i i've uh I've seen this book pop up in schools. I know that, uh, you know, I, I, one of the awkward parts uh, that was in the, the review that my daughter did is she let me know that she was uh, turning off the video for her remote class and just reading the comic. <laughs> <instead of laughs> the picture lesson. Um, how important, you know, when I was a kid, I don't know if you had the same, um, you know, comic books were discouraged in my schools. And like, the, the, there's like, that's not real reading. And it yeah. feels like we changed that. Yeah, thank goodness. Um, yeah, because back in our time, I guess we're roughly the same age, you know, in yes. the 80s, reading comics was seen as nerdy and dorky and, you know, made me feel like I was supposed to be a nerd or a dork. And now it's super cool. And that's awesome. Or it's also cool to be a nerd and dork. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm really glad that uh, that's changed, you know. I <laughs> Yeah. 
How how important, obviously, working kids animation in this. Um, I mean, I've always I was fortunate that uh, even though my teacher was saying so, my father, who was a principal uh, in a school, oh. uh, he he very much believed in comics and yeah. thought that kids uh, would be more apt to read if they could be eased into it with something like this, which oh. sounds yeah. like a, a miraculous thought. But <laughs> well, I, yeah, exactly. I think when I was younger, I definitely did not read books. I I just read comics because of, it's a visual medium. And I mean, you know, I do have my favorite books like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But that's oh, also yeah. something that's very easy to read, you know. Um, so it's a, <laughs> I, I read a lot of comics, but it still didn't get me excited about reading books. <laughs> you know, so it's like I just stayed in comics, I just read comics, still read comics. I don't read many books at all. What's uh, it, what comics are you reading, by the way, right now? What are your what are what are the kind of things that you you get very excited about? I'm mainly well, I for specifically just for like you know work reasons, I read the um, the other comics in this line, mm -hmm. uh, you know the, the younger DC books, but. Aside from that, I still, it's been actually a while since I've kind of picked up um, any comics. Uh, I just, it's so weird. There's like, there's so many comics these days and I'll go yes. to the comic book store down the street here in Burbank and uh, it's just overwhelming. It's awesome that there's so many options and choices, but right now I'm mainly just, you know, watching movies. <laughs> so I wish I could say I was reading more comics right now and I'm <laughs> sure there's people out there listening who, are, who would kill to get into comics who actually read a lot more comics than I do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it just, it feels like there's so many, I, I have a, it's very hard for me to watch television shows because, you know, uh, there's so much to follow and remember from week to week. I have a very short attention span, which is why I'll read or watch a movie or I'll read a graphic novel. That's just one complete story because it's over. It's done. Um, that's also another reason why I don't necessarily read a lot of, you know, you know, monthly comics that have a long ongoing story, but if they collect them into a trade, <laughs> I'll pick it up. You know, mm -hmm. the Netflix era is good for you. You say, <laughs> Oh Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. yeah, exactly. That's uh, I wrote for a Netflix show and uh, binging is, as you know, they, they, they love it. And uh, I wrote for this dumb kids cart, dumb kids show, which is the best show I've ever written for. And I love it. It's called buddy thunderstruck, but uh, it's the stupidest show you'll ever see. And also the funniest show you'll ever see. But so your binging thing, they, they Netflix wanted us to put like a, uh, a seasonal arc in there. So people would, binge from episode to episode because it's an 11 minute animated series by the robot chicken people and it's mm -hmm. a dumb comedy and then netflix is like can you just put something in there so people want to see what the next episode's about so we put like some dumb story arc in there but uh but yeah it's the that, that's kind of how like, my brain works like i need I, I don't want to be you know left hanging uh with a story whether it's an, an, an animated series or, or tv show or comic book i want everything now and then i want it done with <laughs> so yeah. So Buddy Thunderstruck, you worked on that with Jennifer, right? Well, she wrote an episode. So I was in animation when um, I was the story editor on that show and in animation that basically says you're, it, you are the head writer. So I was a head writer. And then, yes, I had Jennifer to write an episode for me and two other friends. But, uh, but yeah, that was, that was the best show I've ever, ever worked on. And I love it so much. But, yeah, she wrote an episode. It was great. Um, Okay, so you got to tell me. So, what's the, the I, I know that, but for the people, what is the premise of Buddy Thunderstruck? Okay, Buddy Thunderstruck is basically Talladega Knights, you know, uh, Will Ferrell's Talladega Knights, but with uh, stop motion puppets. So, the main character is named Buddy Thunderstruck. Uh, he races uh, a big rig truck every week uh, in his local uh, speedway. And the main character, Buddy, like I said, it's, he's very, uh, very Will Ferrell. He's super self-centered, a massive <laughs> egomaniac. Uh, he does have a heart. He actually cares about his friends and stuff, but he's just like this massive, massive ego. Knows he's great. People love him. Uh, so it's just, originally, it was supposed to be a, him having to win this race every week to earn money to keep his shop open. But we just dropped that almost entirely and just made it like a dumb comedy. It's a buddy comedy where it's him and his mechanic, played by Ted Ramey, <laughs> uh, who is who is our, who is a good friend of ours, and we're glad that he said yes. We tried to get Bruce Campbell to do uh, Buddy Thunderstruck, oh. um, which would have been awesome. But uh, he wrote me an email saying that he couldn't do it because he was in a contract doing the Ash versus Evil Dead TV show, or whatever. So like, I, he just didn't want to do it, I'm sure. But um, it's just a dumb comedy. If you have time, it's it it can skew a slight slightly older, which is why older audiences like it because it's not like the safest show to probably put your kid in front of, but it's technically a kid's show. 
And yeah. they just have these wacky adventures, you know, like it's like a, they're having a different job every week, you know, uh, but basically it's just something, check it out. Don't watch yeah. the pilot, watch some other episode, the pilot, you know, we had to shove everything in there. So it might not be the best episode, but yeah. One season. Yeah. Buddy Thunderstruck. Okay. I, I, this is, it, that's, you're selling it well. Talladega Nights, Will Ferrell, but he's a dog with puppets. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, and it's, like I said, it's by the robot chicken people. So it looks gorgeous. And it's their sense of humor, which is my sense of humor, which is kind of like wacky, visual, incredibly dumb. Um, and uh, we were so happy when Netflix, you know, let us kind of do what we wanted with the show. They would give us great notes. Um, you know, it's very rare to get great notes from an executive anywhere. But they also let us kind of go wild with it, which is one reason it's it turned out so well. Um, because we didn't have a lot of hands in there telling us what to do. Um but yeah, yeah, it's just a beautiful show and it's uh, stupidly funny. We have, if you like Evil Dead, we did like a whole Evil Dead parody episode because, um, you know, we have Ted Raimi. We're like, oh, let's throw Ted in there. And um, <laughs> we, we do a parody episode of that. Uh, we do a parody of Clerks kind of. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. We're just dumb. Just Like I said, we're just a bunch of big kids in charge and doing whatever we want. It sounds like you're having fun, though. Oh yeah, that like I said, that's the best show I've ever worked on. It's it's a blast. So if you have that sense of humor, check it out. Do you think there? Is, so maybe there's a key here because you keep mentioning it, both you're in what you and Jennifer have done and the other works you've done. I mean, you you approach this again. Sounds like one of these really stupid, obvious statements. <laughs> it seems like you approach uh, work and you try and have fun, and then good things happen. Yeah, you know, it's I do. Um, I'll work on a bunch of shows that I don't necessarily enjoy. Some of it's freelance. It's just like I've got to take the job, anyways. Yeah, but gotta pay the bills. Gotta pay the bills. But when you are having fun on uh, a show, it just yeah, it's amazing how much better it turns out because there's so much positivity. Um, and like actually, like I said, I'm writing for Snoopy right now. It's just like the most gentle and a, the most gentle show I've ever written for, and I love it because it's I mainly write like wacky comedy. Like I said, Buddy Thunderstruck. It's wacky. It's stupid. It's actiony, but you know, Snoopy show, it's great because it's just so calm and serene. They're, they're really kind of copying the, the old, uh, you know, specials, but I'm loving it. And the, you know, since I love it so much, it's, you know, my work turns out better. Um, I'll, yeah. again, I'll write written for shows I just have not enjoyed and I'll just, you know, I don't do my complete best on the shows if, uh, if I'm not getting paid. Right. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, doing a show right now for the bbc and ha having a blast on that and um yeah yeah i mean I, that's that's the key one reason i did get into animation is because you know i just didn't want to end up having a desk job that sounded boring like my parents so to me it was all about finding a fun job where i could just you know have a blast all day and i'm lucky i found it and then also for writing comics now it's a huge blast it's like I just can't get over it. I'm very, very fortunate. Um, I'm glad I sought it out and really tried hard to become a writer and, you know, it paid off. Uh, thank goodness. But yeah, I just want to have a blast every day. That's all I want to do. <laughs> Seriously. It's so nice. It's so refreshing. You're, you're writing material for kids that feels like it's appropriate for kids and mm -hmm. you're having fun doing it and good things happen. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> <That's> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. That That's uh do you, do you think, let's see, how do I want to ask this? I, I see when, when people kind of write, sometimes when people are writing content for, for kids, mm -hmm. I see this um, almost this desire of, I need to make it legitimate. Hmm. So therefore I need to insert things that yeah. are, you know, dealing with more sensitive topics and other things. Not that that's a bad thing to do, but it always makes it, it, it often, not always often makes work feel a little bit less authentic. Yeah. Because you're trying to push something in, like, uh, hey, we want, you know, we want to deal with the topic of gun control, so let's right. get that into a kids' book. It's like, well, but maybe, yeah. maybe that's not the book for gun control. I, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, SpongeBob's gun control adventure. Yeah, um, it's it, it's tricky because I mean, you know, they're they're trying to figure out ways to connect with kids to teach them about topics about inequality and and right. race and these other things, but it it often feels like it's a landmine for a kid's book. Yeah. You know, it's, and that's where I think to myself, okay, that's something I know nothing about uh, in terms of, in terms of, you know, 
yeah, I don't know how they do it. It must be a very tough job for the editors to kind of try to, to make that call and to try to figure out that specific formula of working mm-hmm. something adult into something young. And um, uh, like I said, the other books in the line, some are you know lighthearted and some are you know have that darker tone. Uh, I would have no idea which one would appeal to you know the audience. I just knew that we wanted to create something that we would read as adults. Yeah. The right. primary when we wrote it, it was like, yes, yes, as a 10 year old boy, I'd want to read this. But also, if I'm having fun writing it, then, you know, something just feels right. Now I'm just babbling. <laughs> but, but you're right. I don't know how they do it. It's, it's tricky. It's a, it's a tricky model because you, you find yourself in a weird spot, I think, where as a teacher or as a parent, you're, you're wanting to kind of introduce your children in a nice way to yeah. some of these bigger social topics that are, that, you know, they're going to see in school, but it becomes very difficult to do that in a comic book for kids mm-hmm. where it doesn't feel yeah. inauthentic. I, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a, it's hard. I, I get, it is hard to do. And I, I, a lot of people, I see these comments like, oh, they should just never do it. Well, they don't always have the choice to never do this, yeah. but it's not easy. I, um, yeah, it's not. I mean, even us just trying to put in, um, there's not really anything adult in our book aside from Ashley's backstory with her dad. Mm-hmm. So I guess, I guess, like you said, maybe that's maybe, maybe there's just something to that. Where can we introduce an audience to graphic novels by you know having them be a little more fun? I think Archimaniacs did that come out yet? Yeah, that's all about like mm-hmm. young Bruce Wayne. They're all having fun and being goofy, right? I mean, yeah, that's definitely. not a very serious book at all. I mean, I think that's I mean, that's the stuff that I would want to read when I was younger. You know, um, I, like it took me a long time to even get around to reading Watchmen as a kid. You know, the book that we beat. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> but, sorry. Um, because a, like a headline out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because as a kid, I just wanted to read positive, fun, colorful superhero stories. Like, so when you know, people told me for years to read Watchmen and read what you know, I'd love it, I'd love it. And so I finally read it, and I was like, yeah, this is a this is a great great book. But still, part of me just loves, you know, the less serious stuff like Primer. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, Batman was kind of, you know, obviously serious back then. It is somewhat of a serious character because of his horrible backstory and he's a brooding dark guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't um, – we got lucky. You got lucky. Well, it, it feels – well, no, I mean, I think you had the right formula. It feels like these books can very easily – put in just it's like a a scale and they just put in a little bit too much and it tips it over (laughs) yeah yeah, very very cautious it's um it it, let's say you know dc comes to you tomorrow and says hey you know uh, jennifer and yourself you had such success with this you you seem to have kind of cracked this this all ages book right um you're in charge of this this new line what do you do Oh man, what do I do? Uh, honestly, I would, <laughs> if I'm in charge of this new line, <laughs> I have created uh, like a bunch of new superheroes. Uh, I, or we, um, I've created a bunch of new super. <laughs> we have created a bunch of new superheroes that we would love to put into these kinds of books. Like I want to have brand new, uh, just like Primer is a brand new superhero in the DC universe. And she is part of the DC universe. People sometimes question that because you know, mm-hmm. But she is, so I would basically just create all brand new superheroes. Um, and but deeper than that, yes, you know, we already did the fun, goofy character in Primer. You can only get away with so many because they can't be the same. So all the superheroes that we're creating now, if DC were to have us do more, you know, put us in charge, I just make new superheroes and try to, you know, somehow still capture that color and fun of the character. You know, so it doesn't get so, you know, serious or dark. And that, again, might be something that an audience would want. Maybe they wouldn't necessarily mind superheroes who are, you know, have somewhat similar qualities of Mm -hmm. being goofy and fun. Um, I mean, if you watch, like, the DC Superhero Girls TV show or animated series, like, those characters are all goofy and having fun. And that's why it does so well. Yeah. So maybe we could do the same thing. But that's what I would do. I mean... It's not like, I mean, if you tell, if you asked me to write a Batman book, I would be like, heck yeah, I would love a Batman book. But I also love the fact that, you know, if they, if given a chance, we could just share more new things with the world. You know, I mean, I know Batman has a billion different books. It's like DC's number one book every, every, you know, month. 
But um, yeah, that's what I would do. Brand new characters. That's it. Yeah. Kids are really smart, you know, obviously. Mm-hmm. And so you can't put too much past them. And like you said, if they feel they're being pandered to, you try something different. I mean, we, again, we're very lucky because they DC took a chance with us. Yeah. I think they or there's us and there's Antihero, which is also the new uh, character that new superhero they ha- have in an original book. Um, so I'm not quite sure why they took a chance with us because you're right. If they already own, you know, all these other properties, I guess they saw something special in it and, uh, and, and maybe, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's like, it, it, I'm just like luckiest man in the world right now, but, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it worked. It just, but I, I think, I do think uh, maybe people underestimate kids a little bit in that yeah. they can, if they see a hero, they like it's colorful. It looks fun. It's something they can pick up. Um, you know, I, my daughter was in the bookstore uh, looking for books, was looking for for One Piece because she loves pirates and it's fun. Yeah. And this book was there for whatever reason. Somebody had taken Primer away from the DC section and shoved it into the manga section for no reason. And oh, wow. so she okay. pulls this out and never had seen this character before, loved it. And that's other kids, they pick it up, they love it. And it's at no point did anyone come to me and say, uh, okay, but now where's... Uh, you know, where's Captain Marvel? Where's Wonder Woman? I mean, you know, they, they know where Wonder Woman is. They can go get that. But yeah. this is something new and fun. Yeah, it's it's funny because, like, I you'll notice that the, I don't think even they, the DC logo is not on the front of the book. Uh, right. So it's, you know, it's meant, I think I think they did that specifically to, so it wouldn't uh, scare people away as well, saying, oh, this is a comic book. This is a DC thing. You know, like, your daughter, when she saw it, if, if she had seen the DC logo on there, maybe she would have been reluctant to buy it. Maybe not. I mean, you should be hard to say. Be, well, not, probably yeah. not about her being surrounded by comics. Yeah, exactly. So she, yeah. Um, that's funny that someone put it in the manga section. Cause that's, that's the one world I don't necessarily know about anything about, which is manga. Um, so yeah. Um, it was an accident. I think it was pure accident. Uh, yeah. But it is, um, and, and I think it was an accident because the format looked the same. That was the other. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I love it, but just new heroes. Um, I, it feels like we need a lot of new heroes. Like we, we're yeah. we're moving off a of 50, 60 year old IP. It's it's yeah. new heroes would be good. My uh, our plan is to give uh, if if they allow us in the future is to give Primer her own uh, superhero team of all the brand new characters that we've created. Wonderful. You know, yeah. Kind of like a, a second East coast teen Titans or something like that, you know? Um, I love so it. the new characters, like I said, I love origin stories and, and you're right. It's just, why not have some, you know, more breath of fresh air, new characters. Uh, it can work. We proved that it, it does work. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Get, get more kids into reading comics with new original characters that don't that aren't uh, you know off putting I suppose I mean not that and not that they're making these off putting comics but yeah it's just an attractive colorful cover you're right I don't know it it worked and um, I mean so anyway you produce something my kids love I know a lot of others <laughs> do made a lot of money that's good um, so a lot of credit to yourself to Jennifer to Gretel it was yeah. a good team so I'm I'm hoping that there's a uh, a lot of us are hoping there's an announcement at some point in the near future to expand this universe. And we'll, we'll look forward to that if it comes. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> the fact that, uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to say thank you very much uh, for taking the time to, to talk over the book. Great success. And um, yeah, I, I love the approach. I just love, I love what you're saying here around characters and development and, the, you know, having them have flaws and all that. It's wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. Well, you know, thanks for thanks for you know, letting your daughter read the book, <laughs> and um, I'm glad you guys liked it. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's it's always like good to talk about it with uh, you know with people who are comic fans. Like I'll do some interviews where the they probably haven't even read the book, you know. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. And it's like okay, but like it's refreshing to talk to someone who actually gets it and has you know vast knowledge of the comics industry and world. So uh, thanks for all the thoughtful questions, and uh, I'll talk anytime, man. Uh, seriously. I, I'm sure your audience probably won't want to hear this again, but oh, no. they, if you they, want to talk about Primer, hit me up. I'm around, man. Absolutely, they'd want to hear more. I mean, so much of the conversation right now, which is the the, the baffling part, and again, not to throw anyone under the bus, but people are begging for new characters. They're begging for uh, entry-level things that you can't. We have a lot of comic fans right now 
who have children and they want to give their children comics. And more often than not, I, I hear over and over, people are giving them like the Dark Phoenix saga and books from the 80s, which weirdly, like the Dark Phoenix saga is more kid friendly than a lot of current comics. <laughs> like it, it, you don't you don't imagine it, but you, you open it up, it's like all right, we've got some, you know, explanations we have to make with why these, uh, this Hellfire Club people are dressed in lingerie running around. But other than that, you know, it's, it's, it's weirdly more accessible for kids. That's so interesting. Okay. Well there, yeah, that's a, that's a good test then I suppose. I mean, if, if, if yeah. you're saying that, then it may, and maybe people should be listening and it's, it's true. <laughs> There's something where we're and it. It worries me actually significantly that we're, we're in this tipping point where we're about to lose a generation mm. to a different medium uh, to, and I, you know, I love manga too, but yeah. I, I worry that we're getting a block of people that are getting thrown into that and not, you know, right. avoiding some of these great comics that I grew up with. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because the it, you know, manga has just exploded and I, you know, it's, it's, some, it's a medium, like I said, I don't, I'm not in or immersed in. So mm -hmm. I hope comics never go away because that's my thing. And I just, it's so hard to imagine a kid not wanting to still read comics uh, that are that are not manga. You know, it's like how could they not? But I'm an old man, so maybe the tides are changing. Kids hopefully will still read comics, but maybe they will. I, I, if comics go away, man, I don't know what. No, I, I I don't think comics will go away, but I do think it's um, there was just this natural, like you said yourself, and and as a for me when I was a kid, there was this natural progression of whether it was the. G.I. Joe comics or Archie or whatever it is. And then you get into Batman, you get into Legion of Superheroes and you're your fans. Yeah. And now um, more and more people are, are picking the kids are going in a, a, a in an opposite angle. Now it's not mutually exclusive, but yeah. you do. I, I go to my daughter's class and they're talking about the comics they really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And three quarters of them are throwing out, you know, uh, Deku from My Hero Academia. And it's like, there, there was there was one Iron Man in there, and that yeah. was in the movie, and it was just that was weird. <laughs> so that is weird, man. Yeah. It, it's it's a change, but I but I you know you you hit on a lot of things I think with Primer that that bring it back, and that's so I want to see more of that. Cool, man. Well, you know what? Uh, yeah, we'll 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 I'll, you'll be the first to know when I can talk about things. <laughs> but, um, Perfect. We're very excited for the future of Primer. And honestly, yeah, thank you so much for the talk. I hope I didn't bore your audience too much. But uh, it's always fun to, like, discuss Primer and, and you know, with people who, who care. <laughs> so I'm all anytime, man, hit me up. Absolutely. And, and as a last comment, I'd say to anybody, um, yes, it's definitely something your kids can enjoy. But I enjoy this book. It reminds me of Spider-Man 70s. It reminds me of a fun superhero comic book. Adults will absolutely love this book. So go check I it out. I agree. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you.